So welcome to a new series to try and help new pilots into the hobby understand a little bit more about Edge TX. Now I've got the lights down in the studio and the reason I've got done that is we're going to turn on this controller so that you can see it a little bit better hopefully on the screen without the, the big lights all blaring everything out. Now this is a controller obviously now the majority of controllers out there these days run something called edge tx and that is the operating system within said controller now the great thing about edge tx is it will look identical or virtually identical regardless of the screen or controller that you're using so for the demonstration purpose we're going to use one with a big bright color touch screen but we could equally do this in the same way, using the same buttons on something that's got a small OLED screen or a monochrome screen that's not touchscreen. We're just using this particular one because I think from a visual representation point of view, it will be easier for you guys to follow along. Now, what I will say is, as you can see on here, I've got all sorts of telemetry uh, set up so I can see the voltage left on the controller i can see the power of the drone i can see a gps that's a set of widgets by a gentleman called daniel barros um, i'll leave a link to his uh, github in the description down below i would recommend if you do have a controller with a color touchscreen as far as i'm aware and, and i'll have to double check with daniel but as far as i'm aware if you're running edge tx and you've got a color touchscreen these widgets should work i don't think it's just for the jumper i believe it'll work on the radio masters as well the tx16 i've also got a hello radio coming as well which is i believe um a, a completely blinged out version of the box well not version but um dupe I, I guess you'd probably say of the boxer and that has a slightly different screen but again like i say we're digressing we'll try and keep on track the one thing i'm quite bad for is uh, is going off track now first things first you come into the hobby let's just put that in the middle you come into the hobby you've got a controller and you're thinking what stick does what and the truth of the matter is that you can make them do whatever you want so we have four different modes that you can use with your sticks now this configuration that you can see here is something called mode two which means that my throttle is here my yaw is here the yaw makes a quad go like that then you've got to to flip it and roll it left and right there and then to flip and roll and change the angle of attack is there that's what's called mode two now mode one would be that's your throttle there, that's your yaw, and then here you would have, again, to flip left and flip right and flip upside down, forwards and backwards there. I personally fly mode two, and mode two is generally regarded as the most popular one. However, it is important to experience them for yourself. If you are completely new to this, and you are untainted by past experience. And by that, what I mean is, when I first came into the hobby myself, I joined a flight club because I didn't know what I was doing. And back then, there wasn't really the help available on the internet. And I walked into the flight club and I was greeted by a group of some of the, the, the nicest people I've met in my entire lives who are still considered friends today, even though I've not seen them for a while. Uh, one of them is actually Andy RC, who you guys or some of you guys will probably know from YouTube. He's, he's you know, a bigger YouTuber than I am. Um, and Andy RC actually flies mode four, I think. But it, 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 it doesn't fly mode two. But everybody else in there flies mode two. So I had to make the decision. Do I want help from a group of people? Or do I want help from elsewhere? And ultimately... I landed on mode two purely because at the time everybody in that flight club was flying mode two and I had no idea what I was talking about. And that's why I've settled on that. But I would encourage you to look at all the different modes and I'll put something on screen now. Now, as you can see from this, obviously it shows you which stick does what in which different mode. 
and if you're not sure which one's going to work for you or you're a bit worried about crashing plug your controller into a simulator and change your mode settings and try them out for yourself that's the only way you're ever going to know which one is the best for you now like i say coming back to the desk a second this is just an introduction to edge tx and to uh, you know radios like this in general but what we'll do for our first I don't want to call it lesson but for our first lesson is we will show you how to change the modes within the radio so all these buttons as you can see have got different markings on them and if we look at the the radio master we can see if we just move this out of the way a second and I've just dropped a box on the floor in the studio in case you heard that but if we look at the radio master so we can see that obviously the screen is different But what we do have, Switch warning. let's get rid of that a second. What we do have is we've got a system button here and an MDL button here. Now, if I just turn that off a second, because I don't want that fan. I forgot, I've got a Gemini module in there. And I've got the fan set to always on, which is a bit annoying. This button says system, this button says telemetry same sort of things if we hold the system button down it will come up with the radio setup menu now within the radio setup menu you can set your date and these are the first things that you're going to need to do and again on the radio master boxer it's exactly the same it's just that you don't have this nice color touch screen so you can set up your date your time your splash screen how long you want your splash screen on for do you want a startup sound how long you have to hold the button so power off displays how long you have to hold the button for country code uh, units etc etc and then down here we've got different modes so mode one is the left stick is the rudder and the elevator so that's your left flip and your right flip and your elevator is the one that pushes you over and, and what well, pushes the quad forward pushes a quad back and obviously flips it and rolls it if you go that far. Mode two is this configuration as we've already spoken about. Mode three is your aileron and elevators are on the left, are on the left, sorry, which means your throttle and rudder is on the right. And then mode four is your aileron and throttle are on the left. Oh, wow, that's wild. Um, so my advice to you is, have a play with these if you settle on a mode whereby your throttle is going to be on the right hand side you are going to need to adjust some springs and tensioners because you're going to need that stuck in the middle and you're going to need that naturally falling to the bottom but for a bit of simulator work you can just hold it there yourself and, and obviously this it will feel a bit looser don't get me wrong but for a little bit of simulator practice you can do that yourself and that's how you would set them so you would go to mode three now it's giving me a throttle warning because this is now my throttle. So if I lower that, but obviously what I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch back to mode two. Now, for anyone who is eagle eyed on the channel, you'll notice that when I show you setup guides of new quads, I'm often having to change my default channel mapping in Betaflight to RETA. And if we look on the bottom here, this radio is set up to RETA. Now, I could make my whole life simpler and change it to what the default one is in beta flight. However, the problem is I've got about 60 quads and then I have to go and, and change all of the other 60 quads that I've got. And I'll be honest with you, changing one at a time is not as difficult. Well, it's not difficult, but it's not as time consuming as changing all 60 at once. Um, so to that end, I'm lazy. It's the simple answer. We are, we're all human. Let's be honest. You know, I'm just lazy. Um, and that's just the way it goes so that's the first page of the setup now if we have a look over here we can then change themes again this is a bit different on ones that don't have um color touch screens but we can go back to the edge tx default if we just hold this button down here so by pushing it in and holding it and then it says set active and we'll just press that again and that's changed our theme to the edge tx default so the next one along is global functions. I wouldn't touch that if I was you. 
uh, trainer. So what a trainer is, is somebody else could come along and plug into the train port at the top, which is like a little headphone jack at the top, uh, another controller that's compatible. And essentially what will happen is it's like when you have a driving lesson in a car that's got dual controls. So the, the person flying could take the, the plane or the helicopter or the, the drone off, press a button and hand the controls over to you. And if you think you're gonna crash at any point, they can flick a switch and just take control away from you and, and bring it back to safety. And that's how we all learned back in the day. We all had these things called buddy boxes um, because obviously the technology back then, I sound like an absolute dinosaur, but the technology back then was so rudimentary versus what it is today that these are the sort of things that we, uh, we needed. And the next one, you've got hardware. So this is where you can set your um, voltage alarms for when your battery goes down. Turn your ADC filter off. I have it set off in each quad, but turn that off. If you're only flying drones, if you're flying anything else, leave your ADC filter on and then just turn it off per drone when you're doing your um, tuning. You can then calibrate all your inputs. So by calibrate, it means to make sure that the sticks are going in the right places, but also the switches as well, to make sure all these switches go in exactly the right place when they're pressed. Um, and I think in that, yeah. So again, internal RF, it gives me lots of different options, but as far as I'm aware in this, this has only got an ELRS which uses the Crossfire protocol, which is why we're not selecting ELRS in internal RF, we're selecting Crossfire because it runs a Crossfire protocol. And then finally, to the information. So it tells me what version of Edge TX I'm running, uh, the date that it was, or the date that that build was built, should I say, so the 22nd of January, so we're running a nice and up-to-date one. Uh, and it tells me all the, the different options and the modules and the versions, and that is, This one will do. Okay, so let's just plug this quad in. So in a second, we'll see, there we go. So we can see these telemetry wizards, widgets, sorry, by Daniel Barris telling us our current RF power is 25 milliwatts. Our frequency is 250. It tells us what our RSSI is, which is minus 32. This, I think, fail safes on these settings at about 100, minus 110, I think. Uh, what flight mode we're in, so we're in air mode, our flight time, and it also tells us what the charge on the LiPo is, so 4.15 volts, and it's a 2S. This quad doesn't have GPS, so we've got no GPS data coming up. If we had GPS data coming up, it would just tell us how many satellites we've got. There's an option within here for it to show you the coordinates of that GPS as well. So if you was to crash it and lose it, you would be able to find it nice and easily. Now I've just spotted, oh no, it's okay. I was just spotting on this quad that the antenna was unplugged, which is a real problem, but it's the antenna for the 04 light, which I've swapped to a different quad, so. So to go into your ELRS Lua script, just tap your system button and in tools, this is where you'll find your Lua scripts. Now, on this particular controller, all I fly is ELRS, I don't fly anything else. So I don't need to have the other ones. You may have loads of options in here if you flash something um, that's standard for all different controllers. So you might have things like Crossfire, you might have things like um, FR Sky, etc., etc., etc. But ultimately, all we care about is the ELRS Lua script. When we load it up, it's gonna give me all sorts of information that's useful to me. I can see in the corner, I've got a C which tells me I'm connected. It tells me the packet rate and it, it'll fail safe at minus 108 decibels. And bear in mind, we're minus about 38 at the minute. So it works backwards. If we lower this, the where it will fail safe then increases. So 50 Hertz will fail safe at 115 decibels, which is a much stronger signal. The, the higher you make this, the lower the signal will be where it will fail safe. And the reason for that, in fact, I'm going to put this to 150 hertz because it doesn't need to be at 250. The reason for that is the higher this number at the top, the faster the refresh rate, so the less latency you'll feel in the sticks. 
if you're flying something like DJI. Okay, that's nice, I'm not sure why. Uh, if you're flying something like DJI, you don't need 500 hertz latency because you won't physically be able to feel that through the sticks because of the latency of the video. And I say latency like it's an issue, it's not, but it's not as fast as the sticks would be at 500 hertz. So you're just wasting potential. The other option, or sorry, the other thing that you need to look at is your max power. Now, unbeknownst to me, I've been flying at max power of 25 milliwatts for the past few months, according to this. Now, the legal limit in the UK is 25 milliwatts. I've never heard of anybody being uh, the wrong side of the law for using something more powerful than 25 milliwatts. But do just bear in mind that if you was to be doing something wrong and you get caught, they'll check everything. So they'll then check. And if you're set to, this will go up to a watt. So if, you, if you're then set at 1000 milliwatts after doing that, something else wrong, again, you're going to cause yourself issues. So because I'm a good boy YouTuber, as you can see, I only ever fly at 25 milliwatts officer. You've then got VTX administrator. I'm not going to go into that right now. And then you've got Wi-Fi connectivity, which is where you enable Wi-Fi and you can then add your binding phrase. You only ever do that once to a controller and to a receiver, to be fair, unless you were to flash it. But you can add your bind phrase in to the, the flash program and we'll do an episode on that. Don't worry. Then you've got the backpack. And again, I'm not really going to go into that at this moment in time. The only other thing to know is it tells you that we're on ELRS 3.3.2. That's important. And the reason that's important is say you've got a quad like this and it's shipped with ELRS 2 dot something dot something, you wouldn't be able to bind it. So somebody on my comment section a few weeks ago said, I've, I've just bought this quad that you recommended and it won't, it won't work, it won't bind with my controller. And it was because the quad was on 3.x but the, the person who was leaving the comment, their controller was on 2.x. So again, I think the next episode we'll probably go into is how to update everything in ELRS because it is such a fundamental thing that ultimately I think it's something that we need to cover sooner rather than later. But this is a really basic first look at ELRS, at the controllers and at some of the different things that they can do. So please do subscribe and if you've got any questions whatsoever, please do leave them in the description down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Until the next time, peace out.